In a deal valued at $2.1 billion, Astra would become the first publicly traded company dedicated to delivering satellites into Earth's orbit. The Almeda, California-based rocket maker intends to go public through a merger with a blank check company, or what's known as a special purpose acquisition company, which acts as a financial vehicle to bypass the traditional IPO process. Good evening. You are listening to another episode of Black Man Into the Wild. I'm blessed to be here with you all tonight, and I'm blessed to have you here with me as well. Uh, Now, this evening, we're going to be taking a look at a company called Astra. And again, uh, they're based in Almeda, California, Uh, And they have a goal to build small, affordable, and scalable rockets that will deliver satellites into low Earth orbit uh, on a daily basis for as little as $1 million per launch. Uh, Astra's mission is to improve life on Earth from space with a service that aims to be much more convenient compared to what the space industry offers today. Um, From powering more efficient and affordable agriculture to helping the forestry industry fine-tune sustainable practices, The implications of sending satellites to space are exponential for our global economy. Now, before we get started tonight, if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like this video, and share with your friends if you like what you hear. All right, from the Washington Post, rocket startup Astra to go public and race for commercial space. Uh, And and since this article was written, Astra has since completed their SPAC merger Uh, But this is still really relevant and and a great story in general, so let's go ahead and get into it. We're seeing hundreds of companies that want to get from anywhere on Earth to anywhere in space on their schedule. Not wait years to get a lot of things to one place, said Astra founder and chief executive Chris Kemp in an interview with CNBC's Squawk Box this week. So we're really focused on building a much smaller rocket produced in much higher volume launched from a much larger number of locations. So, you know, right there, he's really pointing out that there is this massive demand that exists for getting small satellites and other small payloads uh, into low Earth orbit or into space in general. Um, and, you know, if you're one of those companies that manufactures these small satellites and you're looking to get them into space, uh, really, it's not easy. It's not cheap. Uh, and there aren't too many options to consider as far as, you know, companies to approach that conduct frequent and reliable launches. Astra offers launch services of payloads ranging from 50 to 150 kilograms, or as much as 330 pounds, and expects to begin deliveries into space by the end of this year. The company says it has booked more than $150 million in revenue from more than 50 planned launches. NASA and the Defense Department are among the company's 10 existing customers, Astra said. In a second test launch from Kodiak, Alaska in December, an Astra rocket failed to reach Earth's orbit after the upper stage engine depleted its fuel seconds too early, preventing the vehicle from reaching orbit velocity. But the company considered the just shy test flight a success. Now, you know, right here, this is what makes me raise an eyebrow. Uh, Okay, based on what I've seen so far, uh, it doesn't look like they've been able to successfully put one of their rockets into orbit, yet they've garnered a whole lot of attention and a whole lot of investment. Including government budgets and corporate revenue, the global space industry amounts to more than $350 billion. While launch services make up only a few percentage points of that figure, the entire market depends on them, as orbital launches blast off about 100 to 120 times per year worldwide. Phil Smith, a space industry analyst at Bryce Space and Technology, an analytics and engineering firm, said it's notable that despite not yet having sent a spacecraft to orbit, Astra had a sizable backlog of launches. And and exactly, I mean, you know, really, this reminds me a little bit of the story from last year with Nikola, uh, the electric truck startup who also went public via SPAC. Uh, They were making, you know, all these alleged claims that they were going to pretty much come out of nowhere to start mass manufacturing and delivering these electric semi-trucks and pickup trucks, and that they had all these pre-orders and reservations backlogged. And then it came out that in one of their promotional or or commercial videos that showed their proposed flagship pickup truck driving, uh, really it turns out that the truck was just rolling down a hill creating an illusion as if it were being driven. So, you know, I don't want to go as far and say that we're seeing the same thing here with Astra, but, you know, I don't know. It does seem somewhat in a weird way similar. Uh, And the article goes on, The takeaway is that in addition to elevating its public profile, the funding will accelerate construction of a manufacturing facility and associated automated hardware, bringing the company's operational timetable closer, Smith said. This is especially important since Astra claims it'll launch a few hundred times a year. 
Craig McCaw, the telecommunications investor that has partnered with Astra through his SPAC Holicity said in a news release that Astra's space platform will further improve our communications, help us protect our planet, and unleash entrepreneurs to launch a new generation of services to enhance our lives. That announcement followed the successful launch and docking of the SpaceX Crew Dragon uh, with the International Space Station in November, a pioneering mission that officially marked the first time a privately owned and operated spacecraft certified by NASA made the trip with astronauts aboard. Now, uh, although we aren't focused on SpaceX this evening, I do want to note here that earlier this year, uh, in a high-altitude flight test, they did successfully launch and land their SN-15 rocket, uh, which is a full-scale prototype of their Starship rocket commissioned to take people and cargo to the moon, Mars, and other distant destinations. Um, additionally, later on this year, SpaceX will be conducting their Inspiration4 mission um, with a crew of four uh, it'll launch on a SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket in the company's Crew Dragon capsule into orbit around Earth. The trip is expected to last three days, with the mission planned for an orbit of about 540 kilometers altitude, which Inspiration4 noted is further than any human since NASA's Hubble Space Telescope missions. Now, Astra uh, does not directly compete with SpaceX. Their, their main competitor is a company called Rocket Lab, and that's because the two companies offer similar rockets in terms of size and payload capacity. Uh, that being said, Astra is able to offer its rockets at a much cheaper price because it uses aluminum and simplified engines instead of the expensive carbon fiber and 3D printed parts used by Rocket Lab, which currently operates a lightweight orbital rocket known as Electron, uh, providing dedicated launches for small satellites and cube satellites. Uh, and like I mentioned earlier, the deal to take Astra public did close, uh, I think, last week. Uh, but the article finishes off here and says, Astra said it expects the deal to close in the second quarter, pending regulatory and shareholder approvals. Listing on the NASDAQ, the company will trade under the ticker symbol ASTR. Now, uh, do I think Astra will be successful? Uh, I, I do hope so, but I, I'm not sure. You know, they set out on a pretty ambitious journey. Um, and what they're trying to do isn't easy. Uh, okay, based on my assessment, you know, you know, from what it looks like, uh, they haven't yet completed a true successful test flight and landing of any of their rockets. So I would just be, you know, a little bit curious about the timelines for some of their products and services. Um, and really, you know, we talk a lot about the commercialization of space travel. Uh, and I think that's maybe really when we're talking about, you know, getting to a point where the everyday person um, you know, they're able to purchase tickets for leisurely space exploration. Uh, but I think we should also be looking at the industrialization uh, of space travel. Okay, in July of 2019, SpaceX launched their CRS-18 Falcon Heavy rocket that had on board with it research projects from Adidas and Goodyear Tire. Okay, both of these companies are attempting to unlock new opportunities by studying how their products react in a microgravity environment. Microgravity will allow us to manufacture things in space that we cannot manufacture here on Earth. I mean, when we're looking at some of these biomedicines, uh, you know, certain advanced uh, biomaterial research, uh, again, that's, that same CRS-18 rocket I mentioned, it was carrying on board with it a... Uh, biomaterial 3D printer uh, with the capability to print human organs in space. Uh, we're talking about manufacturing human hearts here, people, in space. Thank you for listening, everybody. This has been another episode of Black Man Into the Wild. Have a great night.